My name is Iray Aydil. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Journal of Vacuum Science and Technology. Majority of our articles are written by graduate students, or at least the first drafts are written by graduate students. So what I'm going to do today is to give some pointers on how to write and prepare scientific articles for publication in peer-reviewed journals, and in particular, for example, Journal of Vacuum Science and Technology. The most important thing that we will do as scientists is to communicate our ideas to our peers through journal articles and oral presentations. And we should spend enough time, as much time as we do research, in preparing our articles and presentations. There are 10 essential points that I'd like to make, and I will get into the details of each one of these as the presentation goes on. And these 10 essentials are that we must tell a new story and must have something new to say. When we're writing our article, we must set the stage, prepare the audience, the reader, for what is to come and why it's important. We should organize and frame the story appropriate for our audience such that it's pedagogic and organized. An article should teach how to do something new or some new knowledge. We must write clearly using definite and specific language. We should support our statements with data or references. And our figures must be prepared with care. We must pay attention to the details and grammar and proofread and spell check and edit articles again and again and again. Perhaps the most important thing is that we must have something new to say, a new scientific story to tell. The story is the king and is the basis of it all. Before starting to write, you must think about what is your message, and that message should be important. A typical paper should not have more than one or two major points per paper. It helps to write outlines and drafts of storylines early on during your research. In fact, writing drafts might help the research itself. One might find the holes in the uh, story, in the uh, rationale, and that might suggest new experiments, new directions. And your story can evolve with research. The most, one of the most important points of an article is the beginning. So you must set the stage beginning the title. The title should grab attention. You can think of it as a new newspaper headline. It must be a concise summary of the point that you're making. And what is the article about? It must answer the question of what is the article about. Challenge yourself to make it as specific but yet as brief as possible. And often we don't spend adequate time composing our title, so we should spend some time on it. In the introduction, begin by motivating your reader. Why should they read the article? What will they learn? What is the context? Why is the story that you're about to tell is important? Also in the introduction, you can review prior work. It helps to put your work in context to review what is the pre present state of knowledge? What is the state of the art? What has been done before your work and who did it? Give credit where the credit is due. Relate your story to that prior work. And you can enter the body of your article by telling your readers what will be your contribution in this article. How do you advance the state of knowledge or state of the art? It is important that an article should educate uh, the reader, and this starts with the introduction. In the introduction, there must be enough information for the readers for them to understand and appreciate the, the article. Of course, this must be concise. One can't teach everything in a short um, article. The best way to do this is to assume that your reader is a scientist with a PhD 
in a related field, but not necessarily in the particular field that you're writing the article for. Use references to do this, particularly review articles that may bring novice readers up to date. Organizing the story, what you're about to say, is very important. Um, a scientific article is not necessarily a chronological description of the experiments one conducted. In fact, the crucial experiment might have come towards the end of the research. It is also not a summary of one's lab notebook. So one should think about how to organize what you learned and your experiments, your theory, or your calculations that is pedagogic and rational. An article is a story that has at least one major point to make. It helps these major points and hypotheses early and then support these points with experiments, facts, data, calculations. One can use figures to storyboard and organize the article. A typical organization of an article, um, as we said, it starts with an introduction, motivation, and background very important and it sets the stage. It's typically followed by methods used in the research and in the investigation. It could be experimental, theoretical, or both. Experiments and calculations must be described with sufficient detail such that someone else can reproduce them. This is typically followed by a section like results and discussion where um, you present what you have found and discussed interpretation of your experiments and make your point. Arguments should be rational and pedagogic. Discussion should be specific and deep, not superficial. If there's uncertainty or shortcomings of the experiments or the findings, this is where to point these out. One should give equal weight to competing explanations, acknowledge uncertainty and shortcomings. And finally, the article ends with a conclusion and that conclusion answers what did your article teach. It may not be useful to just use headers like introduction, methods, results and discussion, and conclusions, which are not descriptive, although often used. You might want to use meaningful section and subsection headings. For example, in the methods, you might say Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy and have a section on uh, that particular aspect. This depends on uh, what the article is about. In the results and discussion, it might help to organize your argument around uh, headlines. And you can, again, think of these as newspaper headlines, your major points. Writing clearly is very important. And there are many aspects of how to write uh, clearly. I'm going to highlight uh, two and give a reference that I think uh, all scientists should read for writing articles. My first important point is that be definite and concrete language. This example comes from the reference that I'm going to give in a few slides. For example, a non-definite but not specific enough sentence is a period of unfavorable weather to set in. Set in. That weather might be snow, or if you don't like hot, it might be a hot weather. It's not very specific. A period could be months, days, hours. The next sentence makes this more specific. Note that it's shorter, fewer characters, and fewer words. It's very specific. It rained every day for a week. Both the period and what type of weather set in is specific. Here's an example that might appear in a scientific article. Experiments were performed at different temperatures. So one does know what kind of experiments, what kind of temperatures. So here's how to make it more specific. Films were deposited on metal coated substrate at temperatures ranging from 200 degrees centigrade to 500 degrees centigrade. Of course, one can still even make it more specific. So for example, what kind of films were deposited? What kind of um, substrate? So you can make it even more specific by making it silicon dioxide films were deposited on aluminum coated silicon at four different temperatures between 200 degrees centigrade and 500 degrees centigrade. The second point that I want to make that helps in writing clearly is the use of the topic sentence. In any kind of writing, 
each paragraph begins with a topic sentence. The topic sentence informs the reader of the main idea in the paragraph. The rest of the sentence in the paragraph should elaborate or explain the main idea. An effective method of outlining sections of your paper is to write a list of topic sentences. When you're writing your paragraph, the last sentence of paragraph should anticipate the topic sentence of the next paragraph, and it can lead to the next idea. And this would make the writing more fluid and connected together. In a brief period of time, I can't give all the tips and examples for how to write clearly with proper grammar. The elements of style by Strunk and White has been a um, age-old classic reference on pointers on style, grammar, and how to write clearly. So I recommend that um, each scientist has a copy of this uh, so-called little book. It is very brief, and it has all the elements of how to write well. An important part of the scientific articles are figures. One should spend a lot of time on preparing the figures and they should be prepared with care. They should be clear, crisp, and convey the information without ambiguity. So here is a figure that I made that illustrates common um, mistakes made in preparing figures. One of the first things that you will notice is that there are too many axis labels. They're running into each other and they're difficult. Another is centimeter squared is not a superscript but written as uh, an up arrow and two. And this is typical uh, usage when appropriate software is not used and uh, one can. Um, one should use appropriate software in preparing the figures. One should use consistent fonts throughout in preparing the figure. So for example, here, it's difficult to tell, but there are different fonts on the X and Y axis, and they're probably too small to see. Remember that figures are reduced, typically um, printed as a single column figure, and once that happens, the numbers might become too small to see. Your axis and your choices and whether to use capital letters or small case letters should be consistent. So for example, here, the small case uh, start of the potential is used for the x-axis, but the y-axis starts with the capital letters. Small filled symbols can be difficult to distinguish might be difficult to tell between a diamond and a uh, square or a circle when they are filled and small. Do not use cryptic legends. They might mean something to you, like sample numbers and so on, but it's more important that they mean something to the reader, and by quickly glancing at the legend, they can understand what your data is about. If you're going to use grid lines, you should use grid lines both horizontally and uh, vertically. And do not make the axis or the grid lines too, too light. Having criticized that figure, here is how one can make it better. Of course, one can always improve even on this. But note, for example, that the legends are now um, self-descriptive. So by looking at it, we know that the data has something to do with the growth temperature, and the growth temperatures are given. The symbols are larger, and color is used to make it more apparent, and both the fonts and access labels are larger, and fewer numbers are used. Note also that we scaled the units such that we avoided too many zeros on the y-axis current density. When you have macro graphs, use, the, use clear and high resolution macro graphs. Crop all the unnecessary information from the bottom, such as the institution, the um, company that the microscope was uh, made by, um, etc. Perhaps the most important 
part of a micrograph is the scale, and the scale should be clearly visible. If you will have to write text on the micrographs, make sure to use a light color lettering on dark backgrounds and vice versa so that the writing is clearly visible. Now I'd like to say something about publishing in JVST. Most of what I've said so far applies me to Journal of Vacuum Science and Technology, but just about any peer-reviewed um, journal. And those are tips for writing uh, better and preparing articles better. In publishing in JVST, in your first submission, you should follow the instructions and use the JVST template. A cover letter, while not required, is helpful. You can tell the editors why you think your article is important and should be published in Journal of Vacuum Science and Technology. We try to make it as easy on our authors as possible by accepting a PDF file of text and figures at this stage. However, eventually, after the revision stages and for final publication, we will need separate text and publication quality figures. What happens when your article is first submitted to JVST? The first thing that happens is that an editorial team examines your publication, and at least two sets of eyes looks at uh, your article and decides whether the article should be sent out for review. Now, for this, we use a criteria which you may find on the Journal of Vacuum Science and Technology web pages. To be published in JVST, the manuscript must present original findings, conclusions, or analysis that have not been published previously by the authors or others. That is, you must have a new story to tell. That's one of the most important criteria. Must be free of errors and ambiguities. Must support conclusions with data and analysis. It must be written clearly and have high impact in its subfield. The editors, in deciding whether to send, out, send it out for review, typically look at criteria 1, 4, and 5 and rely on the reviewers for all of them, but particularly on criteria 2 and 3. If the article is not written clearly, for example, your article may be sent back for editing and improving the writing. If, for example, if for example um, it has been published or it's a marginal improvement on an article that was previously published, then it is sent back to the author without review. During the revision stage, all comments from the reviewer and the editorial team must be addressed. The goals of the reviewers and the editorial team is to help you improve the article, make it clear. Your response to the reviewers and editori editorial team should be in a letter, response to reviewer's letter. That letter should outline all the rebuttal points and the changes that you made to the article in response to the comments. Attaching to the letter, or attaching as a separate file, an additional copy which, copy, which changes highlighted, help the reviewers and the editors. What you should not do is to ignore the editors and the reviewers' comments. If you do not want to make changes, or changes are not appropriate, please give a strong rebuttal and a reason as to why you did not make the changes. Finally, I invite you to send your best work to Journal of Vacuum Science Technology A or B, and these are the web pages where you can find all the information as well as the link to submit your article. Thank you.